a practical introduction to polar codes. So in the last and very first part of my tutorial, I was discussing about some very few basics of polar codes where I was giving a brief overview of what polar codes, what is the context of polar codes and how to use them in a, uh, uh, why, why should one use them and so on. In this part of the tutorial, we'll uh, dig deeper, uh, a bit deeper into the polar coding system where we discuss about what do they actually contain. So in the f in as I was saying, there are three essential blocks of polar codes. One is called code construction, one is encoding and decoding. In the very first step, we actually would like to decide some parameters. Uh, that is called as code construction, which will decide some parameter in for encoding or decoding. So uh, what is that parameter? We'll see now. So Construction can be explained in a very simple way actually. So it is nothing but selecting k indices out of n indices. That's all. So these n indices are represented by the first uh, n integers including 0 and that n has to be a power of 2 that is one constraint and the power that is going to be there that is represented by small n and this n is precisely the block length um, which is constrained to be a power of 2 all the time. So many algorithms exist. Uh, to do this sel particular selection, the simplest is what we are going to see and this is also justified very rigorously in terms of simulations by using this paper. So whatever practical code that you can use in simulations, well, uh, uh, this paper s claims that uh, this simplest uh, recursive algorithm can do as good as any complex algorithm that you can use. So the in that sense, we, this this the discussion of this construction co construction algorithm is sufficient. Uh, so the channel that we are going to use for the uh, purposes of illustrating this part of the tutorial is the AWGN channel, and this is going to be used throughout. With modest changes, we can extend this discussion to any other channel, such as binary erasure channel or binary symmetric channel, or things like that. Uh, the only parameter that you have to know is for a given channel you should know the Bhattacharya parameter of the channel uh, for those who don't know what is Bhattacharya parameter they can refer to any standard text on communication systems this is simply an upper bound of probability of error uh, which is not very difficult to understand so uh, and there are very simple formulas available for that Bhattacharya parameter is something very well known so um, what are we going to do in this construction part so we have we have to start with some initial because as I was saying we are going to use a two-way recursion. So given a single value we are going to generate two values by using two different functions. So this initial value is something very critical. This is going to depend on the channel condition the SNR the ch channel SNR so that that which is called design SNR at, at, at some times. So uh, this is going to decide an initial value as uh, by using this function this initial value is going to be used to generate two values and these two values can be recursively applied the same formulas to generate four values so first we started with a single value generated from the initial initial SNR and then it generated two values those two values generate four values this those four values will generate eight values and so on we will stop whenever there are n values at the leaf level we want n values at the leaf level and then we will simply start stop that will happen precisely after small n levels because after one level it is 2 power 1 that is 2 symbols that are available after two levels at the leaf level we have uh, 2 power 2 nodes and we are we since we have uh, 2 power n number of uh, values that are desired we will simply stop after small n levels of uh, recursion once we stop all that you have to do is observe those n values, pick the k least values, let those indices be in the set and output that set. That's all. We have k values. We have been given this n values and we are selecting k values based on the values that we observe at the leaf level of this computational tree. So only thing that you have to observe is the this particular function is nothing special this is simply the bhattacharya parameter of the of the awgn channel at this snr at that snr so yeah that's all so that's what this uh, below note says so this is the bhattacharya parameter of the awgn channel if you were using bec 
the Bhattacharya parameter is simply the transition, the erasure probability epsilon. If it is BSE, so epsilon is going to set here. And then if it is a binary symmetric channel, the initial value is going to be square root of P minus P times 1 minus P, which is the Bhattacharya parameter of the BSC when the transition probability of binary symmetric channel is small p. It is as simple. So this will also sit there in case you are using binary symmetric channel. So it is nothing much of a difficulty. Great. So several things are there that we need to discuss. So the code varies with SNR. So as I was saying, there are many algorithms that are available for code construction. Uh, each construction, when given with different initials, will generate different codes. So what is the best? This question is an interesting question, which is answered in this particular paper in the footnote. So that paper essentially says, is, I was also hinting at this paper earlier. So this basically says that the choice of a good design is not important, not as much as uh, is very important and is much more important than the choice of construction algorithm. You can pick any construction algorithm, but choosing a good design is not much more important than that. Irrespective of the construction algorithm, you can achieve the same performance, but not without choosing a good, uh, good design SNR. So at different design SNRs, you get different codes which will perform differently. And the best one is something of a choice that you should make based on a very critical observation. So that, that is what is being explained in there. So all that you have to do is choose a good design, good design SNR that is given in that paper and then you add that design SNR, simply use the recursive algorithm that I have been explaining in the last two slides. That's all. All that you have to do is that. And this is good enough at least up to 64,000 64, block length. So as I was uh, saying in the very beginning, I have provided several MATLAB modules for your purpose of quick simulations, analysis of polar codes and all. So just go to this link which is also uh, shortened as uh, this link. This is there in the title slide. So you can as well use this shortened uh, URL. Um, ease.gd by polar codes or uh, you can download that code base and use it. Uh, once you source that uh, code base, all that you have to do for initializing, uh, basically which includes the construction part of the coding of polar codes, uh, we simply give these uh, parameters which are essential. So this is the SNR that you are going to uh, use for coding and this is the block length and this is the message length. Once we give those parameters, using this function the construction algorithm is implicitly called and the resulting k values are stored and several other things are also stored so there is a global structure that is going to be formed as a result of this and that will pretty much do whatever you wanted yeah so i mean you are get you are set ready for using encoding and decoding blocks as simple as that in the next parts of tutorial we'll be seeing what is encoding what is decoding in very details uh, you can actually uh, simulate, write your own codes, different variants, just by reading the, hopefully, the, the tutorial, the next parts of tutorial are sufficient for doing that. So, this is the end of this tutorial, and um, I'll see you in the next part of the tutorial. Thank you. Thank you very much.